Well, it's been a long time since we've gotten something that's truly different in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or just in Marvel movies in general. <laughs> So Guardians of the Galaxy is the 10th Marvel movie, I can't believe we're already at 10, in the highly popular Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is the first movie to take the universe into the farthest reaches of space, as our hero, Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, played by Chris Pratt, discovers an orb that the evil Kree warrior Ronan wants for his own use and he's also working for Thanos. So it's up to Star-Lord to keep the orb out of Ronan's hands and also try to save the galaxy. Along with a warrior who's the stepdaughter of Thanos, Gamora played by Zoe Saldana, a vengeful warrior named Drax who's out to get Ronan for what he's done to his family played by Dave Bautista, a talking genetically modified gun-wielding raccoon, played by Bradley Cooper, and his pet tree Groot, voiced by Vin Diesel. And together they all form the Guardians of the Galaxy, the most obscure Marvel property to be turned into a film. I remember back in the days when The Avengers was the biggest risk a Marvel movie has ever taken. Um, just bringing in all these heroes together, or most of the well-known heroes that Marvel has, and putting them in one movie, like, nobody thought that could work. But it did, and it became my favorite superhero movie of all time. But now that we're at the point where Guardians of the Galaxy is announced, The Avengers doesn't look like much of a risk anymore. I mean, making that movie to begin with was a risk, but did have characters that you knew by name. Let's pretend to ignore the past movies. If you never knew Iron Man, Thor, or Captain America's stories, you at least knew them by name. If you ask any general movie-going audience member who the Guardians of the Galaxy are, who Star-Lord is, who Gamora, Drax, Rocket, and Groot are, they won't have an idea of what you're talking about. And the best compliment I can give to this movie is that for someone like me, who's not familiar with this band of Marvel characters, this movie did a fantastic job of introducing us to these characters. Chris Pratt plays Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, and is the fifth actor named Chris to play a hero in the Marvel DC realm. Uh, he does a fantastic job in the role. He's funny. He's charismatic. Uh, he, When he has to be a leader, he's a leader. And he seems like the perfect guy to lead this band of misfits. Gamora, uh, played by Zoe Saldana, is a good character also. Next to Quill, she's the most developed. Being the adopted daughter of Thanos, um, she's tough. Uh, she doesn't take any shit from anyone. Seeing Zo Zoe Saldana green is... Um, Pretty cool. It took me a while to warm up to Dave Bautista as Drax. Um, not the fact that he was miscast, but Dave Bautista, um, when you look at the other actors in the movie, he is not the best one. But um, after a while, I was like, yeah, that is Drax the Destroyer. He's really cool. And um, yeah, every character gets their chance to basically steal the show and have their moment. But the one character that steals the show no matter what is Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon. Um, anything he does in this movie is awesome, it's funny, and he's basically a badass raccoon. What more can you ask for? It's got some amazing action sequences. Um, again, mostly CG, but this is a space opera, so you gotta have your share of um, CG fights. Special effects are really good, especially for uh, Groot and Rocket Raccoon, especially Rocket Raccoon, because if they didn't pull off Rocket Raccoon, then the whole movie just could have fallen apart, but they did. So I give them that. Um, it's got a really good soundtrack um, that is a key essential to Quill's character. And um, yeah, a bunch of entertaining songs, and the production design for this movie is stellar as well. A lot of the joy I had in this movie was seeing all the different worlds they had to go through. Whether it was a CG set or a practical set, all of the environments created in this movie looked amazing. And the humor worked really well also. Um, this movie's written and directed by James Gunn, and um, though I didn't laugh as hard as I did in The Avengers, he does bring humor into this movie, that really does work. And it's always 
character humor. Um, there are occasional slapstick moments, but usually it's something that the characters will do. Uh, Rocket and Groot will um, definitely get the biggest laughs uh, if you go see this movie. But the movie isn't all perfect. Um, I do have some complaints. Uh, one, I'm, again, I know I say this a lot whenever I have a complaint about a movie, but one thing is like kind of an unfair complaint. The other is something that I legitimately didn't like. Um, the thing that I legitimately didn't like was the villain. While Lee Pace does a good job as Ronan, there was never anything about Ronan that made me, like, fear him. I mean, knowing that this guy uh, works for Thanos, he basically becomes the Darth Maul to Darth Sidious, where it's like, this guy's supposed to be a menace, but I'm not feeling it because he's essentially a puppet, whereas Thanos is the Emperor from Star Wars. He's the guy who's in control. And I think next to Loki and possibly Ultron, when, it, when we get to see Thanos really in action, that's when it's going to get scary. Although Ronan was a better villain than Malekith uh, in Thor The Dark World, there was nothing that really seemed evil about him. He wasn't like um, Alexander Pierce or the Winter Soldier in Captain America The Winter Soldier, which that leads into another issue I have, which this is the unfair thing. Um, in the wake of Captain America the Winter Soldier, which is legitimately a serious, more serious movie, it was hard for me to get into the tone of Guardians of the Galaxy, which that's completely an unfair criticism to give because this movie is very much distant from the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I suspect that if I were to go see this again, knowing how the movie plays out, knowing the tone that this movie has, I would be like, you know what, that criticism? gone. But really briefly, back to threatening villains. Uh, who was threatening was um, Karen Gillan as Nebula, uh, Thanos's real daughter as far as my knowledge goes. Again, I don't read that many comics, but um, she was the one I thought that posed a bigger threat than Ronan did. As of the fact that I'm in love with Karen Gillan, um, she definitely was a bigger threat than Ronan. So despite those issues, especially with the villain, Guardians of the Galaxy is definitely a really good movie. Uh, it's a great addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, it's, again, it's got great action sequences, fantastic special effects and production design, a really good score. Characters that are great get their moment to shine. And it's also got an awesome jaw-dropping cameo at the end of the movie during the end credit scene. Is it my favorite Marvel movie? No, I mean, a lot of people are giving this high praise, and it deserves it, but Winter Soldier still takes the cake of being the best Marvel movie outside of the Avengers. Uh, this movie won't even make my top 10 of superhero movies, but this movie is definitely worth seeing in your lifetime. Uh, if you love movies like Star Wars or Indiana Jones, then Guardians of the Galaxy is definitely that movie for you. And that's my review for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. You're welcome. Leave a comment, tell me what you thought of the movie, subscribe to my channel for more stuff in the future. You can check out my video blog channel, AlexG8462. You can find links to my Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and Instagram accounts on this YouTube page. Go check me out on letterbox.com under the name Mr. Robinson. And go check out my written reviews on Geeked Out Nation. Share me with your friends and tell them about me. And remember to know it before you see it. This is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one. See you guys later, and the Age of Ultron is upon us.